Hi guys, I've had to move my Facebook Live today because I've got a few things that I need to do this evening. But this video today is all about how do we keep motivated when it comes to longer term goals. Now already this year in January and I think in February I did quite a few videos on longer term goals, how to set longer term goals and how actually to set short term goals. Well this video is about well, how do I motivate myself when I've got a goal that I think is actually going to take me two years, three years, four years, five years or even a year, whatever long term feels like to you. So. It's, I'm going to give you some tips here. I've got quite a few things to go through on this live about how to maintain motivation for your long-term goals. Now, the first thing is that, obviously, to achieve our goals, we've got to be motivated. How does it ladder up to your purpose, your why? Now, that doesn't have to be some lofty you know, declaration of interests or whatever you want to call it, or lofty statement. It can be something such as, you know, I want to set up a business doing X, Y and Z. Yeah, that's still quite a big goal, but that may feel, it's got to feel realistic to you. Something that a, you feel that at some point you can achieve, but also it's got to align with who you are as a person, what you want to do. So there's no point setting a goal if it's like, well, I want to run a marathon if I don't want to run a marathon. I know that sounds obvious, but so often I think we can set longer term goals or goals because we think like we should be doing them. There's no point because should just sets us up like with a bit of a guilt feeling. But actually what we want are things, are goals and plans that really um, speak to who, what makes us tick as a person. You know, perhaps it is setting up a social enterprise, perhaps it's setting up your own business, whatever it is, it could be fitness, it could be relationship, whatever it is, but it's got to be about who you are as a person, you know. Now, what happens today, what happens very often rather, is that sometimes, and this is something that psychologists call cognitive tunnelling, so there you go, word for the day, or two words for the day, cognitive tunnelling, that's where sometimes we get overwhelmed because we're all busy, I'm sure, busy in our own ways, but you get overwhelmed and sometimes we pick the easiest options. It's like we tunnel and focus what's right in front of us, what's on the to-do list and we forget about the longer term goals. But we need to really set, you know, if you have got something that you want to achieve and you think it's going to take some time, you've got to set a really clear goal about what it is, what it looks like and when you're going to do it. Otherwise, it's like going on a road trip where you haven't got a map. You won't be you won't be navigating yourself. You won't be taking the steps in the right direction. Um, but on the other side, these longer term goals can give you a lot of focus, drive, and energy to move towards them. If that makes sense, they may feel a long way away. But if it's something that really aligns to like what you're passionate about, what you really want to do in the future, who you want to be, or who you want to be with, that longer term goal can give you a lot of focus and a lot of energy. So remember. It's very easy to get lost in the right here, right right now, what's the most urgent thing on my plate? And we do have times like that, we have to distinguish between what's urgent and what's important and really focus on those smaller term, small, shorter term steps that are going to lead us to the longer term goal, rather than focus, focusing perhaps on what's easiest and what's here right in front of us, because sometimes that means that we just focus on whatever comes up and we don't move closer to our longer term goal. Um, and sometimes we do that because we're a little bit scared. We're a little bit scared to go for what we really want to. Maybe we have a fear of um, starting, you know, so it, sometimes I'll hear people say, well, I just need to figure a few things out and I just need to have the right moment to do it. Well, the right moment is actually the present moment. And when you get a flash of inspiration, um, I would say take some action towards it. Really write down, hang on a minute, what was that idea? How does it fit into my long, longer term future? Start with shaping that goal and really look at your life and go, hang on a minute, does that really fit in with who I, I am as a person? Does it really get me excited? You know, is it something I really want to do? So this cognitive tunnelling and just focusing on the here and now, as in what comes up, what comes up without any filters, can be down to this fear of starting, fearing committing to a longer term goal. It can be a fear of failing, you know, oh, what happens if it doesn't work out? You know, what happens if people judge judge me or people criticise me? So we've got to build a bit of a shield around ourselves sometimes and keep, you know, the keep wise counsel about who you share your goals with because sometimes people will say all sorts of silly things just off the top of their head uh, and it can put you off your stride. But also fear of success. Some people are really, really scared of like, what if I'm successful? Is this going to change who I am as a person? 
are my brain are my brains are my friends going to think of me differently are they going to see me differently well possibly yes but if this is for your own longer term happiness and what you want to do then you know life is going to change anyway so the right friends will support you or perhaps you'll find you'll make new friends new acquaintances and your your identity will change i remember when i went first went um freelancing and i always had this identity of being in house very senior in communications and when I was freelancing I was still doing that kind of work but in a very very different way much more flexible wasn't worried about job titles anymore it was more about my pe my work-life balance and flexibility so I understand that it can take time to let go of the old and move towards the new but see yourself in with succeeding in that longer term goal so just checking with yourself is there a fear of starting a fear of failing or a fear of success okay so there's a really good quote from a guy called Tim Ferriss, who's an expert in emotional intelligence. And he says, it's very hard to achieve goals if you have the emergency brake on and the emergency brake is fear. Now, I don't know about you, but I've had situations in my life that have been a bit stressful, a bit worrying, a bit, oh my goodness, right, okay, I've really got to deal with this. What am I going to do? And usually when I've regrouped a bit and what I found with a lot of clients is once you've just dealt with that kind of fear, worry, anxiety, talked about it, processed it, the best thing you can do is start to take action because fear will be the emergency break. It will always hold you back. But what you can do if you let the emergency break go, if you let the handbrake go, fear can propel you because what does fear hate? Fear hates action, so start taking action. So make sure that you're taking action and not just dipping into like wishful, wishful thinking. So there's a few questions that I'm going to give you now that might help you to really figure out what it is you want to do in the long term. And it's very, very simple. It's a nice model that I've seen online. So your wish. What exactly do you want? What is the outcome? What would be the outcome for you, your life, if you achieve this wish or this goal? Obstacles. What will get in the way of achieving this outcome? And plan. How will you work through these obstacles? So these are some really useful questions to ask yourself. And don't try and don't filter yourself too much on the whole, what do I what do I want? What do I wish? You can use the word want, that's even stronger. So it just stops us daydreaming and um, what happens is when we start to ask ourselves what are the potential obstacles, it gets our brains working and that 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 is called mental contrasting where we think about, well, these are the positives, these are the negatives and you start to work them through, even better if you write them down because we have to be aware that sometimes there may well be obstacles and those obstacles, and it's best to be honest with ourselves and, and not to let them defeat us, but think, hang on a minute, how am I going to work around those? My obstacles might be, I haven't got time. You know, my time's really, really full, full on. I don't have time. So then that will get me thinking about how will I get through that obstacle? So that may well be, well, do you know what? I'm going to drop down to part-time work. Um, I'm going to outsource those tasks that I don't need to do myself. I'm going to set up a plan that meets the time that I do have. I'm going to analyse my time and look at well, where are my hidden time wasting you know, pockets of time? Where could I find time? Where are some things, where are the things that I used to enjoy doing but aren't really adding so much anymore? I mean, I know I went through this big shift. There was lots of things I was doing before and it was, well, if this goal is so important to me, which it was, and what I wanted to do, I did drop some things, but I was happy to drop them because I wanted to focus on the bigger picture. So just to repeat those questions, what exactly do you want? That's the wish or the want. The outcome, what would be the outcome of achieving this wish? The obstacles, what will get in the way of, uh, of achieving this outcome? And you know how will you work through those obstacles? So that's really, really important to think about those things, to be realistic. We're not talking about daydreaming and sitting wishing on a star that things are gonna happen because we've got to have the desire, the feeling that we want to do something, but also it does come with some planning and some action, okay? And some perseverance and resilience. I'm always saying that. I think perseverance and resilience are really important qualities. Now, there will sometimes be obstacles along the way, but if you break your longer term goals into shorter term tasks, it's, it's not like the whole 
longer term goal has gone out the window because you've got these baby steps. So, for example, you know, not many people can get up and write a book in 24 hours. It's like, do you know what? I've got a day off work. I'm going to write a book. Now, if it's a small ebook or a PDF, you may be able to do that. I'm not saying it's impossible. Whatever floats your boat. But there might be a need for you to say, well, I'm still working. So what time do I have available? Um, do I need to find a special place to go and write? How much time can I spend on the weekends writing? So it's breaking things down into manageable chunks. Um, and whether that's a personal goal or a work goal, it does need to be broken down into milestones and tasks. And the ideal thing is, is to set yourself block time out in your calendar, block time out in your diary and really focus in your life about, you know, what's more important, reaching this longer term goal or some of these other hidden time wasters. So right you could start with writing you know what three to five things could you do in 30 minutes a day that might take you closer it doesn't have to be huge it depends on what your goal is but maybe it's well i'm going to write this book i'm thinking this book might look like this therefore i've got 30 minutes every day or do you know what if i get up an hour earlier and I don't watch breakfast TV, then I've got an hour extra. So do you see what I mean? Breaking it down, as I said before, is really, really important. So it could be, if you are writing a book, spend 30 minutes outlining the first chapter, commit to writing 200 words every morning before work, or uh, and then every Sunday you could be thinking about, well, every Sunday at the end of the week, I'm going to review what I've written. So... It does require commitment, it does require investment, but that sort of meticulous upfront planning will really help you to hit your goals. And, and I've done it myself. I was working full time in a very busy job and I did both, I did, what's it, two diplomas um, and I actually met all my goals because I did sit down and meticulous, meticulous, easy for me to say, carefully plan that's better carefully plan how I was going to work through those goals into baby steps because I had to because I knew I was busy in my other job and it was important to plan that time out and the reason we also do this is if we schedule those baby steps then what happens is we don't have to sit there deciding about well am I going to do this today or am I going to do that do you, do you know what I mean it sort of stops that paralysis where or you know I've got up for an hour early this morning but uh yeah, so what's my first step? Do I do it? Do I not? Actually, oh, hang on, I'm just going to focus on this. So if you do spend some time planning and schedule your day, have those reminders, then it's more likely to succeed. So, you know, it needs to be broken down and make sure that you have got that plan. If it's something big and longer term in place, it may well shift over time. Sometimes we find we've been a little bit, um, we haven't thought about that question about what obstacles would get in the way and how can I overcome them you know if you've got kids is it well you know how am I going to factor in childcare around that you know or who can help me with babysitting for example it's all these sorts of things obstacles or what's the word um there's another word for it you can look at obstacles or you could look at what resources do I need to help me okay so if I've got kids and I want to write a book I need a babysitter for an hour every evening do you know what I mean so you can look at it that way to really be clear about any obstacles but schedule your goals so that you are not uh, spending months on your plan you know get that bit done first it may well change sometimes things happen in life as we've seen at the moment it's happening all the time isn't it um then you can sort of take the decision work out because you've already thought about it so think about those those actionable steps you can take every day towards them now um you can think about how you schedule your time as well you know are you a morning and evening person or a morning and evening person is it better for you to have, for example, one hour in the morning where you do meaningful work, which is the work that you really need to focus on? Um, and instead of deciding to do that, you could almost set up some kind of routine for yourself as in, OK, so I get up at six o'clock. I do this hour of meaningful work, which is the big piece of your longer term goal, the work that you need to do towards that. And then you might have work that you do during the during the day anyway or just stuff that you need to get on with and that's your daily work you know maybe you need to start doing that um, and it, you know maybe you've got kids so after your hour of meaningful work it's about getting the kids ready breakfast 
uh, kids are going back to school now, so maybe getting them back off to school. I appreciate homeschooling is a real challenge at the moment. And then maybe once you've done all that, you can check your emails, you know, have a look at what you need to on social media, get on with your daily tasks. But can you see you've chunked out that hour in the morning to do your meaningful work? Now, you may have more than an hour. You may decide, you know what, I feel so passionately about this goal. Every other Saturday, I'm going to spend half a day writing or whatever it may be. But set those kind of blocks of time, you know, think about your schedule, think about your time and think about where can I do the meaningful work and the meaningful work being the stuff that's going to lead to the longer term goal success. Um, the other thing we can do, and this relates to that earlier point of cognitive tunneling, where we just focus on, you know, we just sort of go like that and focus what's in front of us. We need to think about when we're working on a longer term goal, especially if you've got other things going on in your life, but even related to your longer term goal, what's urgent and what's more important. So if I do this important task, what's going to happen to the urgent task? So it's having a bias towards how you make those decisions. So, for example, you could say, um, if I get up at six in the morning, then I can write 200 words. That's just a really, really nice sentence to use for you to sort of embed that pattern, that schedule that I've just talked about into your day. For example, if I get work emails, say you're working full time and you're working on another goal, like you're studying for something, you could say to yourself, if I get work emails after 5 p.m., I'll leave them for tomorrow morning because it's easy to get dragged into things, isn't it? And that's a classic example of where you make yourself too available too frequently and you just create this, you know, this this cycle of emailing and emailing late into the evening. I certainly experienced that early on in my career. And I think I was just trying to prove myself, really. All I was proving was how little sleep I needed. So it was ridiculous. It didn't really do me, you know, and I had to rein it back in, rein back in my boundaries. So, for example, as I've said, if I get work emails after five o'clock, I'll leave them for the morning. If, um... You know, after five, I'm going to finish my work at five o'clock and then I'm going to turn off my Blackberry. Or it could be if my friends invite me to go out, I'll go out, but I'm only free after 7 p.m. So um, it's those if when, you know, if that happens, this is what I'll do type statement. So it's it's really thinking about your schedule up front. So the other thing you can do is that sometimes with our goals, we get a bit if it's a longer term goal. We, we set the goal, so we've talked about setting the goal, we've talked about breaking the goal down, but the, what we can do, there's a fantastic quote by Stephen Covey that says, start with the end of, in mind. So have a think about, you know, in an ideal scenario, what does this success look like? Um, what does it feel like? And, and write that goal out clearly, you know, with, with a timeline, okay? Things might happen and get in the way, but as much as possible, try and stick to that plan. So start with the end in mind. So when I was doing my coaching qualifications, you know, there were times when I thought, hmm, this is going to be interesting. You know, I'm working full time. I've got a busy job and I'm doing two diplomas. So I had to really work out that schedule that I've just talked about. So I didn't get I didn't delay myself by procrastinating by planning. Does that make sense? I sat down and got on with the plan. And that's actually served me really, really well in my life since then. But what I did do was focus on the finishing line. How's this going to feel? What's my life going to look like? What am I going to be doing? You know, what is the end result I want? And I knew that end result. And so I sort of worked the path backwards and I thought, OK, right. So it started off by researching the courses. I gave myself a plan to do that. It that became about signing up for the courses when I knew what was involved. Yes. Did I have a little moment of overwhelm? Absolutely. It was like, what have I taken on? But then when I broke it down to say, OK, well, this diploma requires this. This re diploma requires this. I worked backwards in terms of these are the number of hours I need to do. This is how much time I've got every month, every week to do it. And yes, it did require dedication. It required commitment. But I knew I wanted to do it because it aligned to my purpose. It was like, yeah, I could totally see myself doing it. I really got into the zone of what that would look like and feel like. And I'm glad I did it. You know, absolutely love it. But work backwards on your goals. So 
you sort of work from you know start with the end in mind as i said because otherwise if we start at the beginning or start trying to figure out the plan in the middle we kind of get lost in the middle like the, the the messy middle it all feels a bit messy you know once you start getting more details or thinking about more details of what this is going to entail it can start getting a bit messy so we want to think about those but think about what the end looks like how your life's going to improve set that goal so um yeah so i've given you quite a few tips today so it's a bit of a um a, a short shrift uh, walk into how to motivate yourself for longer term goals so we've talked about starting with the end in mind we've talked about how your goal needs to align to yes what you want to do there's no point doing something just because you feel obliged to do it um, I'm sure you've got plenty of those sorts of goals at work that you have to make interesting so we don't want to do them with our goals do we so um, <clears throat> really think about where was I does it align to my purpose? What I'm passionate about as a human being? You know, it doesn't have to be big. It can just be, you know, it can be something simple, but usually longer term goals are a bit more complex. So yeah, start with the end of mind, align it to your vision, absolutely what you're motivated to, um, plan backwards, avoid the messy middle. Um, think about that statement of, well, if my friends ask me out then, and I've, I've dedicated this time to my goal, then I will go out after seven o'clock on a Wednesday. Those if then statements to head off anything that might be a distraction. That's good just for distractions generally. If I do this, it's almost like thinking about what the consequence is and making a plan around it. It's not stopping you from doing things, but just being realistic with your time. So the if then statement. We talked about the scheduling of the days in terms of when's your protect, protect, productive time, when's your meaningful time, when you can dedicate a lot of time and energy to your goal. Maybe it's an hour in the morning, maybe it's 30 minutes. Maybe it's better for you to sort of start doing that at the beginning of the day before everything else starts and you get lost in everything else that's happening and break it down. Have a look at what your day looks like, you know, so it might be get up, you know, sort of have that hour that you need to or hours at the end of the day or the weekend. So have a look at your days and what they look like and where you can do your most meaningful work. Um, really break down your goals into baby steps. Absolutely important. So um, plan. If it's something longer term, make a plan for it. What am I going to do? Work backwards. Where do I want to be in year I don't know, it could be one, two, three. Where do I want to be in year two? I want to be here. Okay, so what do I need to achieve by the end of year one? And then you can start breaking it down month by month. And it might might evolve as you come along, as you get new information. If you're studying, you might find, oh, it's taking me a bit longer than I thought. That's absolutely fine. It's absolutely fine to adjust as long as you've thought about it because you're almost prepping your brain for success. You're prepping your brain and seeing yourself in that state so really break things down into baby steps and make a conscious decision to spend time i would say if you can every day at least every week on what that goal what those um on those shorter term goals that's really really important and just check in with yourself to make sure that you're not letting that fear that emergency break hold you back can you release the handbrake and ask yourself you know if i'm dilly dallying Am I sort of waiting until it's exactly the right time, which is never, there's only now? Um, am I scared of being successful because I'm going to have to leave behind something that I'm really comfortable doing and step into the unknown? Am I scared of failing, you know, because my friends might think, well, what, what, what's he doing? What's she doing? Are they crazy? You know, just, do, you know, you know what's right for you and just share your goals with people that are really going to support and champion you. So really make sure you follow those steps and um, make sure that you're not getting distracted on things that are just flying in at you. I know if you're working full time, those things do happen, but you can still use that approach in your working day. You know, if, you're, if your uh, intention is to get promoted, you might have to make a decision about are these just important tasks that are noisy are they really that urgent focus on the urgent things first and that gives you time to focus on your career path and other things you need to do conversations you might need to have with your boss for example and don't forget to celebrate small victories well actually any victory is a victory isn't it um, and think about those questions that i gave you you know the questions about what is it you wish um, 
you know, what's going to happen when you achieve this wish or this outcome? What obstacles might there be? Not to be negative, but to be realistic about what might get in the way and how am I going to get around those obstacles? And you can also think about what extra resources might I need to achieve this goal. So, yeah, and as I said, celebrate your success along the way. Keep a journal. Um, it's so easy to um, future trip a lot and not realize that actually a lot of our satisfaction and happiness comes from the present moment so really make sure you're taking time to celebrate those little successes you're having along the way because you know we don't want life to be a business plan we don't want life to be a project plan we've got to enjoy the unfolding of that goal along the way so there you go and don't forget visualization i know for some of you um, and for some of my clients they find that really challenging really difficult but visualize your goal visualize close your eyes and play a mind movie because our mind doesn't know whether the movie we're playing is fact or fiction it has no idea the brain just believes what we tell it so why not play that movie it might take a bit of time for you to get into it if you've never done it before but just relax and think about what does it look like what does it feel like who am I with? What can I see? Where am I? And just go do it gently and build up some time to visualise or a few moments each day if that's if that's sort of where you are with visualisation at the moment. But visualisation is so powerful. It's mental rehearsal for your future life. Anyway, so there you go. Um, plenty of tips there to get you focused on your longer term goals. And um, yeah, I think I'm back to five o'clock next Friday. Had to do it a bit earlier today because I've got to uh, speak into a client later on today that needs some help on her career. So looking forward to that. And I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. Thank you very much for wash what washing. Yes, thank you very much for washing. That's very important. So I can't get my words out today. I think I'm a bit over caffeinated. Anyway. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. If you do want me to cover a particular subject or you feel, you know, there's any of these tips that you think, hang on a minute, I'm not sure how to do that. Could you drop me an email, Sarah, or send me something like a, an action sheet or a tool? Hello, Andrew. That's a natural wave with my hand. Um, <laughs> so if you need any tools or exercises, because I know I tend to pack a lot in and I talk quite quickly at times, then um, drop me a line and I'll... I've always got something in the toolkit. I'm like a good mechanic. Anyway, so um, have a great day. Have a great weekend. Speak to you soon. Take care. Bye.